Um, okay, today for the light review, I'm interviewing Luca Roncoroni. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah, that was good. Good. Thanks, mate. Really good. A friend from the days when I studied on the Erasmus program in Milan and creative director of the world's first ice hotel. So, welcome to you, Luca, and thanks. Thanks for picking up the phone. Oh, thanks, Chris. Nice talking to you. Well, yeah, that's uh, very, very kind of you. Uh, so, I understand the hotel has been going since 1990, but obviously you weren't working on it then because you were studying in Milan yeah. and Norway, right? Um, exactly. How did you end up swapping the warmth of Italy for the bitter cold of Sweden? How did that it, have come about? It actually started... Uh, with my Erasmus program. So the year before we met in Milan, I was exchange student in, in Oslo at the um, design, art and design school in Oslo. So I came here uh, and um, yeah, I did my nine months of exchange student program. And during those, uh, those months, I, um, uh, I participated in a, a land art uh, program or workshop seminar uh, up in the mountains in Sweden, in uh, Norway, which are, was organized by the, the Bergen School of Arts on the west coast of Norway. And that I had a first, for the first time I used to know to do like uh, small sculptures or installation or land art. Uh, so then I went back to, to Italy when we met, uh, finished my, my degree in architecture, and then I moved uh, for good to Oslo, where, I'm, where I live, where I've been living uh, since. And uh, when I came back, I, I got more and more interested in ice and snow. I did some more like uh, another, um, uh, another um, student uh, workshop again in Norway. And after that, I applied. Uh, by that time, I was working in an architect office doing like conven conventional projects. And so I applied. Um, I, oh, apply is a big word, but like uh, I sent a mail to the ice hotel info email. And I asked if they wanted to have an apprentice as a builder. So learning to, how to build in ice because I wanted to do some more architecture and to learn more like a, like a bigger scale uh, project. So um, I did got a, eventually after four months, I did got a reply from the ice hotel, from the creative director back then, Arne Berg. Uh, and he said, oh yeah, you can come next month. Uh, problem was that I had a job in, office, in an office in Oslo. So uh, after the weekend, that weekend, I went to my boss and I explained the situation. I said, I really like to try this uh, uh, ice hotel thing. And they were, as uh, you know, as, as Scandinavians, <laughs> they were super uh, open and, and kind of uh, nice, uh, thoughtful to me. And they said, basically, well, we think if you're really burning for this idea, then, then we should let you go because we know that when you come back, uh, you'll bring something back to the office. So I got two months off from the office uh, went up to the ice hotel this was in uh, uh, 17th of october uh, 2001 and i was up there for two months working like basically as a yeah, as a builder so building ice wall and snow walls shoveling around snow and do apprentice uh, job i also got to do uh, to be an assistant for for an artist there and and do some sculpture and make some furniture and then after those two months i went back to oslo to my office job uh, worked there until the following summer and then uh, then I made the decision that you know I wanted to kind of continue working with ice and snow so I quit my job in uh, summer 2002 and in uh, October again 2002 I went back up to the ice hotel stayed there the whole winter and did both like the building job but also did my first um, uh, my own project for the first time my own design and from then I've been running, working as a freelance and uh, working uh, with different projects in ice and snow, both within, like, within the ice hotel, uh, but also as a, you know, my own projects. Uh, and then um, I took a break uh, a few years later, like four or five years without, without doing anything in basically no architecture, no design, no ice, nothing. I did completely different things. And then in 2010, I went back to the ice hotel for a project and ever since I've been there like every winter. Uh, in different capacities. Uh, the last four years, for four years, I had the responsibility for all the artists that, that we get there. We get about 40 artists every year. So I had, for four years, I had the responsibility of organizing their work. Um, and then since uh, January 2019, I took over as a creative director. Uh, and now 
I still have like my main job is still those like responsibility for the artists. But then now I'm more involved, deeply involved into the isotel in general. So anything that is uh, uh, has some kind of a creative process involved or other artists or designers, that kind of is also my responsibility. So this is like briefly my history with isotel. That sounds really interesting, but um, I imagine that I I did I don't know if you know the Treno Velocità in Napoli. Yes. Uh, so I worked with Zaha Hadid on that project with yeah. um, with some success. But I also, as a result of that, I worked with uh, Anish Kapoor with yes. the underground for yeah. uh, Napoli, and that was a very different experience because working yeah. with artists brings all sorts of um, different challenges. You might say uh, absolutely. And, uh, and it's funny that you mentioned Kapoor because then then we have some something more in because in uh, 2017 I did a, a, a I believe it was uh, Kapoor's first and maybe even only uh, ice project to date uh, in Canada so so we got a, a through like a, a, a local architect Canadian architect we got in contact and and we realized together a, an ice project and it's definitely um, it's incredibly uh, uh, kind of you learn a lot by working with uh, with artists of that, of oh, that absolutely. Number. and it's uh, um, it was uh, amazing to see in his case like how how kind of down to earth and open he was so it's um, yeah it's super cool to to work with so many different artists and that's one of the nice things for me at the Isotel as I said every year we have about 40 artists from around the world and some of them are like uh, designers or architects so I'm, I can more relate to their way of thinking because that's you know that's my kind of uh, education and then we do have sculptors or painters or musicians which have obviously a completely different background and they see the room the space the light and the you know the building uh, in a completely with completely different eyes so it's uh, it's very interesting for me to kind of learn and try to kind of grab as much as possible for each of those so as a Actually, it's, it's an interesting point. How, when you studied in Milan, how much of what you studied prepared you for what you're doing now? Because it seems so, I can see elements that are similar, but I mean, it's a completely different um, material well, than it, anything you use, right? Yeah, it is like, you know, there are like, obviously there are, like you say, there are some similarities because you're still working with like, with space and the perception of space and what kind of experience you want to give people. Uh, but then the material itself is, you know, it's completely different from at least anything else I've used in the kind of more conventional buildings. Because even even though you think about like some more kind of uh, living materials like like wood, snow and ice are still like you know, hundred times more alive in a way. They change so much more. They, they you know, on a daily basis they kind of deform and change and move. Uh, then you have the as aspect of 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 light because it's you know again the material is so special especially with ice uh, light is it becomes uh, i would say even more important factor than in a normal uh, building uh, so so it's not like it's a very different process uh, or for example even the the you know the, the basic kind of rules in a way for an architect if you're an architect you do like drawings and then you hand them over to somebody that's going to build for you and then maybe you go to see the to visit the building site uh, in ice and snow architecture at the ice hotel the, every artist and designer they actually come up and build their own stuff themselves so you know you never hand off over your your drawings to a contractor you actually come up with your own drawings and you build wow. your own walls and chairs or furniture or whatever so that's a, a huge difference and what i think for me the good thing about uh, uh you know the kind of a in a way yeah, academical or like the university um, uh, education that I had in Milan, it, I think it was it was very good uh, to kind of uh, more like build up kind of a state of mind or like a flexibility and and try to um, yeah adapt and learn to each situation. So that part I think I can I can kind of I see the value of that that maybe I didn't see all the time when I was a student. Um, so that's um, that was a good it's a good part yeah. But it's definitely a different process compared to. Uh, uh, more kind of conventional architecture and it yeah. just stays there it just stays there for four months five months and then it disappears so that's also um, you know 
incredibly huge difference compared to a normal building. I find it surprising that they actually, so you're saying the artist, okay, I, I get the artist, but I guess the architects, I always think of um, architecture as being more <laughs> computer based, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hands off, because I'm quite, um, I try to push the makers of this world because I think there's so many skills that have been lost and I, I really um, I love people who can design and make what they mm. they have in their imagination if you like but yeah. the fact you're doing it there is is great I mean it's that's basically that, 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 that is one of the things that um, that is one of the things that attracted me the most and it kind of pulls me into this world uh, you know every day because I really like to build stuff make stuff uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't manage to kind of only sit in front of the computer so I really like the fact that we all go up and build our own stuff with our own hands and that's and the isotel has made that point of like a crucial point of kind of a core value uh, you know uh, isotel in Sweden is like you said it was uh, it was the first one in the world it's the original but now nowadays there are like a, a lot of different ice and snow hotels around the world one of the things that keeps us apart from the others is the way we choose our uh, artists or, or creative people, designers. And uh, uh, so we have an international competition every year and we pick, uh, normally we build between 15 and 20 projects a year. Uh, and, and one of the kind of, in a way, uh, when you guiding say line, when you say you build 15 to 20 projects, are they rooms? So, yeah, rooms, uh, uh, ceremony hall, main hall, ice bar. So like different projects that are with that, that all together build up the ice hotel as a whole, as a whole experience. So, you know, we have the sleeping rooms, but we also have ceremony hall when people can get married uh, or, or kids can get baptized. Uh, we have an ice bar. We have a main hall with like and main hall with reception area. Uh, so we, like we have, all like the the ice hotel experience is built up of a number of experience which most of most of those experience are rooms where guests uh, also sleep but then we also have other kind of uh, rooms or spaces uh, so that's why i say like a pro call them project like as a general um, kind of term uh, and through the the jury through this competition uh, we have the, always the goal that about 30 percent of the artists that we invite so that the jury picks out should be rookie so that means uh people that rookie have, did you say rookie yeah, yeah rookie oh, cool. so the people that people that never work with ice and snow i know that we have dangerous like, i could think of loads of reasons not to do that like yeah. the chainsaws for one thing do they yeah, use well, chainsaws yes we do and we have a course like so everybody goes through a course uh, uh before they can uh, they can are allowed to actually use the chainsaw so we have like the all the kind of safety uh, uh, measures in place and, and then we also have a, a, a team of uh, experienced artists and designers that we call support team which as the word says supports the artist and especially the, the the new ones but but the point of having every year about like five or six artists or or team of artists that are completely new to the material and new to the isotel so they're a lot of them like it could be you know we have people from brazil or africa that never touch snow or seen snow and they're coming there and they're building their own project the the huge value in that is that they come there with a completely open mind and no kind of uh, restriction so so that's what keeps in my opinion in our opinion is that's what keeps us still kind of as a reference point uh with ice and snow because we every year we kind of uh yeah we kind of renew the 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 kind of the approach and of course this makes it more challenging for us because we need to also learn uh, or teach, teach yeah we need to teach also the, I mean, it sounds really the, stressful how do yeah. you get someone from brazil to build a nice hotel i mean that's just ma mania that's manic oh, well you should ask them is they're the crazy one that come from brazil <laughs> <laughs> we are the naive what's this, one we think, what's this cold we thing even <laughs> think that they can make it and they are the crazy that come to do it so do you find that there's a lot of synergy between what they do? I mean, I'm interested that just out of sheer curiosity, do you find that they come with the similar ideas or are they some ideas that are so crazy that you just think that can some, only be? Yeah, so, some ideas really are really like uh, really crazy in the sense that I, 
uh, like on the on the border of like impossible. And of course, that's also obviously the the you know the point of having a jury that is experienced in with this material and this job, because of course we have every year we have about 150 application for 15 projects or 17 projects. So it's about 10 percent that kind of gets in. And as you can imagine, there is also a big chunk of those projects that need to be kind of uh, uh, kind of put aside because they are physically impossible to build. But then there are those projects that are kind of, they could be both from rookies, but also from experienced artists that are like, they push the limit of the material, which are kind of nearly impossible. But that's, you know, if they're nearly impossible, then we can give it a go because we can make it. So that's, that's one of my jobs throughout the summer. Once we pick the artist, then I work from May until October with each artist and we go through the, the feasibility of the project. So we go through, you know, we take their sketch and we say, okay, you want to build this thing. This is almost impossible to build. But if we, you know, if we kind of go through it together and see, think about like what the, what's the experience that you want to present to the, to, the, to the guests, to the visitors, and then I can help you with my experience uh, to, you know, figure out how to build it. And then, uh, so far in 30 years we have never like not realized one of the projects that has been chosen and so that kind of, there's always a first time for everything <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so no so far it's always been a super interesting process of course like uh, very uh, stressful because it's also uh, it's just a few weeks you know we start in the middle at uh, the beginning of november in the middle of december the hotel opens and uh, and we have like you know, it's it's a lot of work. It's like seven days a week, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 hours a day. And everybody is, is working like super hard uh, to get to get ready. But um, so far has been it's been incredible to see what what people like with artists without experience with snow and ice never touched even the material, what they can come up with. And and of course, we also have a huge experience in the building team the support team and all the organizing the production team the light team lighting team so so we have a lot of uh, knowledge in yucas in, in sweden so. so for the lighting uh how how do you how do you use it i mean i was thinking because do you encourage the cool light to reflect the location or do you use warm light to give the guests an impression of warmth because obviously I mean, you, it's like minus five, right? Inside. Right, the right. It's always it's pretty much a stable temperature of minus five, and outside it could be you know anything from minus forty to plus five. We had the last few years with a bit of more swinging in the temperature. So, but inside it's pretty stable, uh, minus four, minus five, and that again, that's also another uh, peculiarity of the isotel that uh, we don't have any like the only requirement that you have when you when you send an application is that. Uh, you know, you have a certain size of the room that are all the same, uh, about uh, just under 30 square meters. And then the only requirement is there must be a bed, like a double bed in the room. Anything, anything else is up to the designers. So we have no steam or no kind of limitation. You can use ice or snow or a combination of the two. And the same is with light. We never, we don't have any kind of uh, guidelines. Like, so we say that you cannot use foreign materials. So you only need to use you have to use ice and snow and we cannot put pigment in the snow so you cannot uh, like color a piece of snow red but you can use red filters light. to give yeah. to give um, a red uh, rgb light or kind of light with light we have no no limitation so depending of the the you know the vision of each artist they will uh, when they get up to sweden they will sit down on day 1 with a um, uh, we have a group of about between six and eight light designers. Uh, every light designer will normally have a responsibility for two to three rooms. So they sit down the first day with the designers, with the artists, and they go through the concept and they figure out what kind of light, light source they want to use it, how they want to use it, what kind of filter would you want, warm and light. Do you want moving a kind of a, could be a static light or it could be like more of a, uh, there could be different scenery, different kind of uh, light sets that, that kind of move or, or um, change throughout the day. So there is no, um, we don't put any limitation, but of, uh, then we have, of course, like there are some like practical limitations when it comes to 
either uh, you know workload or or time or budget and all that like in any project but but we never asked directly uh, one specific kind of light or or feel for the rooms okay that, that's interesting because i would have thought that i would have thought that there would have been i guess a repetition of similar design because i know for me the first thing i want is people to feel comfortable and mm. for that is you know if you're in a cold environment i mean you can yes. trick people into thinking yes. it's warmer by using warm light and i guess that isn't some maybe they're just thinking so far out the box that it becomes like a completely different concept it, it could be you know it could be you know we have definitely a, a lot of people that think the way you just mentioned and then uh, you have the opposite uh, the opposite case where where the artist would say okay we want to emphasize the cold exactly. you know, we want to yeah, have one or the other. colder yeah. so 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 you can have both um, uh, kind of uh, uh, approaches uh, and we definitely had different kind of approaches and we definitely have we even see some kind of you know uh, certain themes or certain kind of uh, experiences that are kind of coming back like even if artists never uh, you know uh, completely different artists with different background, they kind of uh, tend towards maybe a similar solution that was already experienced, you know, 10 years ago or so. I can imagine. So, so, um, <coughs> so that's, uh, that's, definitely, um, that's definitely true. But it's, uh, the nice thing is like, it's very often a, a process. That's also something good, I think, uh, compared to a more conventional uh, building process. We are not 100% we don't have to 100% stick to what's in the paper, what's in the drawing. So when you come up there and you build your own rooms, there are still uh, there is still a certain room for uh, for kind of uh, flexibility uh, changes and flexibility. Uh, so and and that's you know on the one side is because we want to leave it that flexibility for the artist, especially if you're a new one. Like we said earlier, if you come from Brazil or or, or Spain or or whatever, like or Australia, maybe it's not so easy to kind of picture yourself how it is to be inside an, a snow no. room. But so then many, you want to adjust it. Say. Yeah, for most people, people. Yeah. yeah. So, and then of course, so that's the kind of, if you want more seen from the artist's point of view, but then we also have a need to be flexible because of the material. As I said earlier, like ice and snow are changing every day based on the humidity, temperature, wind, and, and whatnot. So, we have to be flexible. We cannot follow the drawings like uh, uh, you know to the centimeter. I don't even say millimeters because that doesn't <laughs> fit the ice. A few centimeters. That's the tolerance we work with. So uh, that tells that tells you like uh, we need to be we need to be able to kind of improvise and and follow a little bit, go with the flow. That, I think that's also. I mean, the uniqueness of the building gives a. Uh, gives a unique approach as well, doesn't it? I suppose. Um, definitely, definitely, and that's uh, for for me and from all the artists I've been talking through and working with through the years. It's what a uh, what it kind of is the most fascinating things actually that it kind of um, uh, kind of the building has a completely different uh, place in the kind of in the communication or the process between you and the building is different. Like you don't uh, you as a human or as a professional. We don't have the um, the full control on the object or on the pro uh, project. So normally, you know, as an architect or as an engineer or as a designer, if you're a product designer or a furniture designer, you you kind of know exactly, you know, the dimension of this chair is going to production, this and that, and you have everything fixed. Uh, when you do a chair in ice, uh, you don't own uh, kind of the, the chair and the object the same way. So it kind of the 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 power relationship is a little bit almost upside down because the chair, the ice chair or the ice wall or the snow wall, they're moving, they're changing. So the next day when you come back after you've been home sleeping, the wall or the chair is not the same <laughs> as where you left it. So you kind of, we don't have the same kind of power uh, that, that most of the time we human being want to have on the, I on think the built environment. So. Obviously in architecture and design, people often use the term organic. I think probably your... Yeah. Your ice hotel is the most pure form of all, an organic uh, building or an organic design. Yeah, uh, it's definitely like, or it's organic. Organic, definitely, both like in a literally and 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 yes. kind of uh, yeah. uh, more like a visual point of view for sure. So the teams that you, so do you have one team every year for the lighting designers? So do you, because I imagine 
as well as for the building of the ice hotel the light the lighting design brings other problems that perhaps you wouldn't encounter in a normal design so do you employ the same lighting design teams every for every year or do they yeah we have a we have a core we have a core of the team that has been the same for uh, from uh, many many years so, you know there is one guy that has been there for maybe 25 years and then there is the you know the next one has been there maybe, maybe 12 years so we have a core uh, of maybe let's say three four people that have been like there for you know many many years and that they are kind of um, uh, they are super experienced both when it comes to the results you can get with light but also the you know what kind of actual like the kind of the hardware you know the what kind of light source works and and also the all the cabling and the very mm -hmm. practical stuff so so and then around this core of design uh, light designers then we build with different people uh, because uh, this project being uh, like such a short project uh, just to you know for a light designer it would be like uh, maybe six weeks of work of job so then you know everybody can understand that they you know they have their own <laughs> more conventional work back home and then they come up to do to do the ice hotel so sometimes the same people cannot come back year after year and then maybe they you know most people have been there for a few years and maybe they take a break they do something else and then they come back so we have a we always have there as well like kind of a little bit of a mix between uh, experience and new which is also much more sustainable for the ice hotel because then you kind of in a way educate more light designer to work with ice and snow and then you kind of expand your network so the day that you need maybe more light designer or or, or you have other projects around the world then you can get light designer from from so, different because conventionally the way it works is an architect will specify a specific designer to work on his project but i guess in, in this case yours you're the you're the builders and the lighting designers and the architects feed into that so what they want they get from you the both the building and the lighting design so that's quite probably a unique model for something yeah it's or absolutely closer it's to our reps or maybe it's more like it's a similar to a large consultancy where the uh, lighting designer is part of the building and architecture team um, yeah yeah, I, I normally like since since I uh, started to uh, kind of to work um, yeah, the last four years with the uh, direct contact with the artist. I always uh, like the chief of the uh, of the light designers always gets the, the 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 idea as soon as the juries pick them up in May. So I start to talk with the uh, with the responsible for the light designer, and we start to look at the rooms and and the concept together from the so even before we start to cut the first piece of ice, the light designer is involved and start to come with their with with their feedback so then when again when six months later when the artists are physically uh, in place on the building site then the light designer already has a kind of a good idea of what the artist vision oh, is good and then they start to talk about how to actually put it in practice because again there like you said there is no like we 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 don't have a like a, a spec list for the light like no architect or designer comes there is asking oh i want to have so and so many led sources there and there everything is done kind of in place with a kind of face-to-face -face meeting with the light designer and they together they figure out okay let's try with this light source and that light source they bring the actual light in the room like the they have the eyes there and they sample it there so you said from that point of view i guess you could say that it's almost a little bit more like working on a on a, a school project like an university project where you have a workshop a one-to-one full-scale workshop where you can test and you know build and test and a light designer and an architect student will work together in a one-to-one -one model and they will together get through the get through the process and get to the light concept so it's not like um, it's not a definitely not a one direction kind of communication where you deliver an order and then you want somebody to install so it's um, it's a very again uh, going back to what you were saying earlier. It's a very organic and kind of uh, uh, yeah, it sounds it's on almost, project. So it's like a utopian build, isn't it? Something. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> I would say so. I would definitely say so, and that's maybe why me, like as an architect, uh, I'm kind of very drawn by this because it, you get to learn so much stuff and to do a lot of stuff that as a 
normal architect you don't get to do like you don't get to put your hands on a on a concrete wall or on a uh, you know or on on stone or on light as a conventional architect while up there we can we can test light we can build stuff and we can we can experiment with artists so it's uh, it's definitely a kind of a very very special and probably a yeah, utopian do you use any di daylight in your i was thinking because it's a really weird scenario isn't it because Obviously, you've got an ice hotel, which mm. is its enemy is daylight, I guess, because you're going to melt it, right? So, how do yeah. you do? You have any daylight lighting design in your? So, so yeah, through the years we had like a, that's something that the daylight thing has been a bit of a kind of a kind of a wave thing. Like it's it's been like coming and going as a kind of a way. I don't know if it was like a, a more popular at certain in certain years than others, but we did have a lot of uh, uh, rooms or even in the church with daylight windows so basically with big ice blocks that worked as a as a filter and then and let in the daylight what we have noticed the last um, well last year we had one the the ceremony hall last year we did have like natural light coming in but what we have noticed through the years is that uh, you know uh, the north of sweden is quite extreme so in winter is completely dark but as soon as we get to like february march the day gets very bright and very long quickly so the problem with having natural light is that when you get into march like towards the end of the season then the room is kind of flooded with natural light strong natural light that you would uh, basically lose a lot of the details in the room mm. and then the the artificial light that you place there it would it would kind of uh, uh, be kind of overwhelmed by the natural light so what what most artists have, have figured out the last few years is that it's much better to to you can have more control if you use um, uh, artificial light you can mimic natural light coming in through a window so you can still have the feeling of kind of getting natural light in but at the same time you can have the same feel of the room throughout the whole season instead of having that you know uh, last the four or five weeks of the season in march april when the room is so bright that it kind of potentially your work uh, as a light designer and your work as an artist uh, architect may may be spoiled because there is basically too much light well, it's so, quite cute uh, isn't it let's face it yeah, yeah. and then it's uh, and then it's also like you said uh, we also have a uh, to to take into consideration also the the melting thing so uh, obviously uh, it melts the snow around an ice window would melt a uh, different rate so we will we'll, we might have like some uh, structural and aesthetic problems as well so the last i would say last uh, four to five years has been almost no uh, use of uh, natural light uh, again mostly uh, as, uh, only i would say only for a, a specific choice by the designer so again that's also nothing that that, that we as icl kind of impose so um, feels more like the it was more like theater for something the whole thing yeah, is it is. theatrical yeah. uh it's it's a lot of like uh, a lot of stuff is very much like building a kind of a set design so so definitely it's yeah there is a lot of uh, similarity with, with that as well for sure yeah i think certainly um when you think of the ice hotel the first thing to me in this day and age is what's the environmental impact um because on the one hand it's you could say it's the most environmentally sensitive hotel in the world because it's 100% recyclable, apart from the lighting, obviously. But on the mm. other hand, you could say it's the, the one of the worst because obviously, it just you build it, it disappears. Yeah, it does. It's a weird one, isn't it? How do you study that? Do you even have any? Um, how do you? How do you, I suppose justify some of that? I mean, not, you can justify it from an architecture and artistic point of view, but how do you yeah. environmentally manage it? Um, you know, we're, we're trying to get better every, every year when it comes to the environment. So for example, uh, a big, a big step we took uh, about, uh, seven, eight years ago was to install a lot of, uh, solar panel over the production hall so that, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of the electricity that we use, um, uh, in, in the buildings and to work is, uh, it's uh, solar energy and the remaining is a uh, certified uh, electricity. Uh, then we do use uh, we do use only um, electric uh, equipment. Uh, we all also are kind of switching uh, 
slowly switching over to electric uh, tractors and, and like uh, heavy machinery. So to to reduce uh, to reduce that um, you know that kind of footprint. Um, but of course, like there is there is you know we still have room for improvement like in any in any other uh in any other business the our kind of the, the kind of the biggest kind of counterweight in a way is that uh, uh you know the material is is picked up from the river that is about uh, uh between 70 and 80 meters from where the ice hotel is built the ice hotel is built on the shore so so we definitely keep the you know the uh the, the kind of the the carpet the footprint is super, is super local is super local and it's, and it goes back to the to the to the river uh, and then we try to we try to make the process in the in the last uh, 10 years the process has become much more um, efficient so we build uh, fa faster and with less uh, use of, of uh, energy um, but uh, yeah it's, as you say like it's there is always a kind of we always try to kind of uh, balance the Kind of positive and negative and negative sides, and uh, so far we think we are kind of managing to kind of uh, find a good uh, a good compromise uh, between those two those two aspects. Those are two oppose those are two opposing forces, really, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I think I can't think of anything else. I probably we haven't covered. I know um, lighting is very important. I guess. Yeah, in creating the ambience that you want, and also just the fact that how do you control it once you're in the room? I mean, do the people? There's no light switches on the wall, right? There's yeah, yeah. It's a very like from you know compared to a normal building or even to like a theater, it's a kind of a simple uh, electric system. So n like the average room would have basically two switches, one by the door and one by the bed. So that basically you can turn on and off the light like you would do, you know, at home in your in your bedroom. But then yeah, every year we get we get more and more kind of uh, requirements or, or or wishes from the artist to do, you know, maybe you have two or three different kind of light sets. So you have maybe a couple of buttons beside the bed so that you can mm. have two different kind of uh, settings. Kind of, we have a lot of uh, um, dynamic lights so that kind of maybe it goes in the loop with the player and kind of control a uh, computer control so that there is some uh, activity on the light uh, there is a sound also being added uh, more and more so that the light the light the sound and the actual uh, physical experience they kind of melt together to give a kind of a full full-on uh, experience to the guests so so uh, yeah the cables are running in in the ice wall so uh, in in spring now, like this time of, this time of the year when the ice hotel melts, we need to go around and and pick up from from the ground all the, the like the physical installation, the hardware. So yeah, yeah so. Well, that's brilliant. I think I think, that, I think that's uh, all my questions exhausted. To be honest, I mean I could probably go on forever, but um, yeah. it wouldn't. You know, you've got work. <laughs> um, but let's see if I I'll stop this recording and. Yeah. Um, Hopefully it saves automatically. Thank you.